13 and 3. She is 32. 37, 35, 31, 27, and 24. My baby is 24. Caitlin is 27, and Jessica is 32. Ella is 9, and Hayes is 7. Walker is 15, and Connor is 14. Mary Margaret is 40. Emily is 38. 21. Crazy. It was wonderful. It, it really was. A major adjustment. It was exciting. Crazy. It was a struggle. But it was different. It was a challenge. Tiring, but wonderful. Worrying. Oh, there's no manual. Um, well, for me, it was to say no. <laughs> whenever somebody has hurt them, or they're going through something, and there's nothing you can do about it to take away the pain. I don't know. Just trying to do a good job. Knowing the right thing to say. There are no instructions. Lots of things. <laughs> Leave empty glasses laying around. Pick it up after. When they talk back to me. Connor is extremely stubborn. He should be an attorney one day because he will wear you down. Tell me things that they've done in their past that I don't know about. We have battles about keeping her room clean. My mom said that they argued so much, but I don't remember that but it sounds like it was frustrating for her. Walker, he doesn't believe in himself enough. She doesn't clean up behind herself. The simple things are the sweetest things. Bringing me flowers out of the yard. Probably sending me cards and telling me how much I mean to her. They all hug me and tell me they love me before they ever leave. Always tell me they love me. After bath time at night, whenever they still both would like to sit with me. They take care of George by looking out for me on special occasions. You tell me often, you know, what a great mama I am. She calls her mom regularly. She, she tells her dad and I every now and then, I'm so glad y'all aren't crazy. And you know, we really kind of are, but she thinks we're relatively same parents. And I thought, yeah, that's a pretty good compliment. Take more time and with them. I would discipline differently and encourage more. I would forget all the housework, everything else that had to be done and spend everything just sucking up it all at one while they little because it's gone in a, in a minute. I probably wouldn't worry about things as much as I did at the beginning. Maybe I'd spend even more time. Maybe I would be available all the time. Just, you learn that working outside the home is not as important as being with your children. They clean up messes <laughs> most of the time. They're very vocal. They say what they mean. They're very stubborn. They're family oriented like I am. I think we have some of the same taste in decorating and clothes. Connor has a little bit of my mischievousness. He loves to play a prank. Walker is kind of compassionate. She has my weird sense of humor. Uh not sure I can say them on the screen. Ella, I call Ellie Belly. Raj, I've always called Bud. He taught me how to be a parent. He was the first one to call me mom. And walkie-talkie. Lee will kill me. It is Peely. You could say Mary Margaret. Since she was born, her pediatrician called her M&M. Austin was Gibby Goo, because he was always gooing, uh, crying. And so con man, because he will con you. <laughs> Emily, sometimes M. Savannah is pumpkin, because I dressed her like a pumpkin her first year. <laughs> And Hayes, Hazy Basy, but he doesn't really like that. <laughs> no, I call her Kitty because her name's Catherine, or Boo every now and then. Worm, because she wiggled. She wiggled when I carried her, and she wiggled when she got here. And Michael is Boo. Enjoy every minute with them. Never give up. Just You have to relax. You have to do your best. You're going to make mistakes, and it'll be okay. They probably won't ever even remember. This sounds trite, but quality time is important. You know, make the most of that. They grow up too fast. Don't doubt yourself. Do the best you can. What you're doing matters, and you are making a difference, um, and your kids will appreciate you one day. 
spend as much time with your children as you can. Remember that a lot of things really don't matter. Enjoy every minute. Give your children to God and you will never fail. Take your children to church, raise them up, and the best handbook for motherhood is the Bible. Spend as much time as you can reading to them. Encourage them to read. Uh, buy them books. Technology is great, but it doesn't take the place of that one-on-one that -on -one time when you read together. If you say you're going to do something, follow through with it. I know things get hectic. You have when they get into doing all the sports and you're in the road all the time and you have more than one and you're going all over the place and you just think, oh my goodness, enjoy every minute of it because it'll be gone and you'll be wanting it back. I think that you have to be there. I think you have to know what's going on, but the child needs to have some independence as well. The days are long, but the years are short. Enjoy them. They are developing their personalities. Enjoy every minute because they are a hoot and it passes really fast. Hug them as much and love them as much as you can. Oh my. It's a little more on the line with teenagers. Pray. Pray a lot. Never quit praying. <laughs> well, the first thing I think of is this too shall pass if it's a teenagers will try your patience. They're growing and learning and so you have to grow and learn with them. Um, sometimes Those are tough years but just try to think back of how it was when you was a teenager. Just be there for them, listen to them, don't register shock on your face if they tell you something shocking. Just let them know that they can always come to you. Do a lot of praying, try to lead them to God. You'll get through it. More patience. Continue to pray and stay on your knees. <laughs> Beg God to <laughs> carry them through those four years or six years of college for some of them. If they're going away to school, give them that first six weeks alone. The more they come home, the less likely they are to feel like they're acclimated and they're making friends. Be there if they need you. Be there when they want you there. But I, I don't think you need to be with them all the time because you're really trying to raise an independent citizens support them because it's, there's a major transition from high school to college. How do you survive the teenage years? What will it be like to be a great grandmama? <laughs> I don't know, just going into high school ages when, you know, getting older scares me. When do you step in and maybe say, that's not the way I would do it? I guess how do you sort of lead them um, and, and keep that balance of a soft place to land, but a good direction as far as your moral compass and everything when the rest of the world doesn't necessarily agree with the way you're pointing your kids. How did you survive when you didn't know what to do some days? If she needed to move home, we'd make it work. You know? I've had that, I've had that. Um, and I've told them, no, you're welcome. I can help you get set up a place and we can put you here, but you're not going to live at home with mom. There is a time you need to get on out, but if they ever needed to come back for hardship or whatever, yes, I, my doors are open. I mean, obviously we would always take them back, but again, I think it would have to be temporary because I don't think they want to live with me full time and I'm not real sure we want to live with them full time. Yes, you're always welcome home. You always have a home. <laughs>